Okay, so when I first saw it on the Switch eShop, I'm not gonna lie, I judged a book by its cover. I saw Hyperlight Drifter visuals, I saw Fury Boss Rush gameplay, all of that then topped off with an Enter the Gungeon few points. You gotta be fair though, if it can even stand close to any of those games, we could have something just truly special on our hands today. So with that, hit that subscribe button if you love the Switch as much as we all do, and let's just get this one started. So in a story, it's best described for me as minimalistic. While there's NPCs to meet and bosses to, you know, interact with, the story, it just largely plays out as a mystery that's slowly unfolding. Most of the story as well, it's presented in riddles. So you're gonna be able to kind of interpret it as you will. It's very much an experience that's meant for discussion after you finish playing it with your friends and those around you. Here though, the opening moments quickly set this and the tone up as you awake to find your dead father and brother on the ground ahead of you. Your mother, she's just missing entirely. Now if that's not strange enough, before you know it, a bodiless spirit introduces itself to you and proceeds to, yeah, possess your family cat. This cat though turns out to be your guide for this world. Now within moments then you'll have your father's revolver in hand and it's basically off to work. What the hell is happening and while you're at it let's take down some buses. Overall, I gotta say, I really enjoyed the story here. The locals who live in this world are all extremely unique in both design and personality, from those that are humans, to golems, to what appears to be like house-sized ghosts. Boss moments, then they each felt like they progressed the storyline in some way. And even in death, this game gave me cutscenes that would just reveal just a tiny bit more of information. The story, it is inspired by themes of personal struggle, but how again you interpret its plot points are gonna be down to you. It's not for everyone but I really did enjoy that approach. So gameplay wise what we essentially get is a boss rush game meaning no enemies just moving from one boss location to the next so think Fury, think uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Then this is combined with some light exploration and puzzle solving in its world. Boss fights, they're basically bullet hell based, meaning your screen will be filled with enemy fire before you know it. Each, of course, will then progress with different movement patterns and ramping in difficulty as you slowly deplete their health. Controls for this type of gameplay, I gotta say, they've gotta be super responsive. Unfortunately, they do deliver that here with a twin stick shooter setup alongside a dodge mechanic. Now, like many in the genre before it, this dodge it makes you invincible meaning you'll be weaving and diving through bullets before you know it. Boss fights overall like I say always entertaining with unique movement patterns. A couple of the 18 felt a little bit cheap at times when the locations would actually like obscure my viewpoint but this I'll be fair it was very very rare. So now if this all sounds a little bit difficult to you, first off, it's far from the hardest in the genre. In fact, I would have liked a higher difficulty setting to play with from the very beginning. We do get options for this game, but they only make the game easier, not you know, more challenging. These options, you can double the amount of damage your weapons give out, or you can even turn on invincibility mode if you just want to kind of enjoy the story and minor exploration. And that's it for bosses. The core mechanics, they never change as you progress. The only thing you will see is your health bars gonna get bigger. And then the weapons you use, it's got a real nice selection of toys to play with. So outside of bosses then expect to be exploring this kind of small world, looking for information to drive the story forward, even actually facing the occasional puzzle, but I will say these normally just came down to hitting a button. It's not rocket science, but it for sure keeps the pace going, and I think that was a wise design decision. Overall gameplay, I enjoyed my time with this world and the 18 bosses, I enjoyed the exploration, and fans of the genre, there's nothing really new here, but the whole package definitely puts its own personality on things, which is more than enough for me. Visually, Itta is beautiful. I referenced it before, but Hyperlight Drifter much. And if you don't know, that's the highest of compliments in my eyes. This is another great example where pixel artwork doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a retro vibe. With a consistent theme in its small world of greenery and ruins, it still manages to make each area of the map feel unique and feel alive. They each hold their own personality, like introducing fog or some truly crazy NPCs or just the downright weird, like see the location with a whole lot of eggs. On that though, I will say it's also not just like weird for the sake of variety, but each has its own explanation, each has its own purpose in this world, and that really brings this world to life for me when they can give me an explanation behind what I am actually looking at. 
Most importantly with any title taking influence from the bullet house genre is that the game's only as good as its enemy attack patterns and yeah the bullet spread and I'm happy to say we have a winner here. Not only are they varied and completely insane at points but they're super clear visually which is always important. You know when there's so much going on screen they need to create a separation between the bullets and the environment and they achieve that here by giving the bullets a neon outline. I never felt like I was in a situation where I was lost or couldn't see what was happening on screen. On top of that then the solid frame rate of course is absolutely essential and this thing did and stutter once. So last up for visuals, the animations and each is unique. Yes, it's not the heaviest of animation, but they keep it consistent from character to character and the world itself. So it was always something new. And I really like some of the small touches they've added here, like see the movement of Ita's cloak as you dive or as you move, or our cat companion here as she flies through the eyes of a school. This to me is just small attention to detail that I love to see. And overall visually, I've got very few complaints. If I had to improve anything with this one, I'd probably change change up the colour of the enemy fire, just give me something different to look at that could also be used maybe to represent what level of the fight I'm in, but you know after 18 boss fights all of them having red bullets kind of got a little bit repetitive. Visually though, look, overall a well crafted world is complemented with varied enemy design and increasingly challenging bullet hell visuals. What's so somber one moment just goes crazy the next, it's a nice stark contrast like the calm before the storm as they say. So last up we get audio and I like a good chunk of it. The main world itself we get a relatively chill soundtrack which is then supported by some really nice audio work for these environments. Think of the animals around you, the weather, your footsteps, the dodge as you hear your cloak movement. Everything here has something. Sadly though the same can't be said for the boss fights. The dodge sound is mostly missing and I really wanted that. It's kind of like a reassurance that the input worked when your eyes you know they're scanning away from it to target an enemy and then the fire effects they're sadly just very very weak here for me boost the fire effects add the dash sound that's all it really needs honestly but bosses almost feel like only music at a lot of points with that being said though the music is great from the fast paced boss themes through to the more somber moments in exploration it combines like this mystical appeal with a hint of chiptune Okay, so overall, Ita is another welcome addition to the Switch eShop library with clear influences from the likes of Hyperlight Drifter and Enter the Gungeon, but it still manages to bring its own personality to the table, meaning Ita affides feeling like some cheap knockoff. While not quite as good as those other peak examples, it can still respectably stand with them. You know, it's at the grown-ups table, if you know what I mean. With a story that's minimalist but super interesting, it kept me curious. Gunplay, it's not the most challenging, but yeah, still not the easiest either. And then the visuals, they're beautiful examples of how pixel work doesn't always mean retro. Also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but this one all created by one guy and that's super impressive. Sadly with that though, I would have liked more difficulty options from the beginning to truly push me to my limits and the audio it is lacking and I feel like a whole level of intensity is missing from these boss interactions. I want the audio to intimidate me, I want it to make me get on the edge of my seat. Today I'm giving it a great 8 out of 10, this was a, a surprise and I can strongly recommend it for beginners through to the most advanced and I'm sure very few of you will be disappointed. Thanks for watching, I truly appreciate all the support over the last month. So many of you have hit that subscribe button, it's amazing to me. Then yeah, let me know what you think of this one in the comments below. Shameless plug is nearly over, but hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. And I'll see you all on the next video.